Well, welcome everybody to another um, segment uh, brought to you by the Women Lead Online Forums, brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. And I'm Patty Vargas, I'm your host today. And today we have a subject matter expert who is brave enough mm -hmm. to sit in the hot seat and say, go ahead, ask me anything. And our session today is going to last for about an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guest and the attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. And if you have something that you'd like to contribute or ask anonymously, just put it in the chat to me and I will share it for you. Now our topic today is, oh crap, my credit crashed and burned. <laughs> but no worries, recovery is possible. How's that for a title? That's a mouthful. It is, and I am so excited to introduce today's subject matter expert, Karen Zullo, and let me tell you a little bit about her. So Karen is the founder and CEO of Insight Credit Group Incorporated, and she has been assisting clients in the credit repair and debt settlement industry since 1999. She started when she was only 10, and she's known as one of the top debt and credit analysts in her field. Her key focus is to help her clients restore their credit worthiness after they've been through an unfortunate financial hardship, and we have all been there, right? And by using the federal consumer laws, she legally and ethically assists thousands and thousands of businesses and individuals with the removal of unwanted and inaccurate items from their credit reports. Her knowledge, compassion, and ethical business practices have made her a sought-after expert and consultant for both new and existing businesses within the financial service arena. So without further ado, I'm going to hand this puppy right on over to Karen. And Karen, tell us a little bit more about you. Maybe why do you do what you do? What got you interested in this? Okay, thank you so much, Patty, and thank you for Michelle. It's a pleasure to be here with you today. Um, yeah, uh, the nutshell version of how I ended up doing what I do is um, about 25 years ago, I dissolved a business partnership. And in that disillusion, I ended up with half of the debt, which at that time was about $40,000. Mm -hmm. And I thought, no problem, not an issue at all. I've always had great credit. I can find a way out of this. So two days after I dissolved that business, I walked down to the Department of Records and I started a new company thinking, here I go, I'm on my way. Um, long story short, that company did not take off as I had anticipated. So I was struggling to make ends meet, paying the um, debt that I had accumulated through the disillusion, and then just a little bit of debt that I had on my own. And, um, you know, I still thought, no problem, no problem, I can, I can make this happen. And what I realized is that instead of me normally making my above minimum payments that I usually can make, all I could afford to make was these minimum payments. Mm -hmm. So I was making these minimum payments um, over what turned out to be four years. And I was realizing through this that I'm like, man, I'm making these payments every month and I'm not getting anywhere. Getting My anywhere. debt is not getting less. Mm -hmm. So, you know, me being stubborn and just continuing to think I'm going to get out of this, continued that cycle for four years. And finally, I said, what? Something's got to give. And when mm -hmm. I got brave enough, to add up the number of, the amount, I should say, of minimum payments that I made over that four year period, I had paid back um, a little over $14,000 on that $40,000 worth of debt, yet I still had $38,000 worth of debt. Yeah. So that being said, all of my minimum payment, 90% of it was going, if not more, was going towards interest. interest. Very little was going to principal. Mm -hmm. At that point, I threw my hands up and I said, I am done. Now, me being somebody who was very, should I say, attached to my credit score, <laughs> bankruptcy was not an option. I'm like, there's no way I'm filing a bankruptcy. In hindsight, that might not have been the best choice, but um, I didn't do the bankruptcy. And I said, I 
something's got to give. And a friend of mine said, well, why don't you go talk to these people down in Mission Valley? And um, they just started a new company and they do something called debt settlement. I never heard of it. It was very new to the consumer um, 25 years ago. So I walked in, talked to them. They were ground floor, and I mean seriously ground floor when I walk in. They, were they hadn't even really launched the company yet. Mm -hmm. So they said, I said, tell me what you can do for me. Um, because I'd already checked credit counseling, not an option. Bankruptcy, not an option. I didn't know of any other option. They said to me, well, we can get you out of debt for less than half, probably about 40% of what you owe. And we can do that quite quickly for you. And I, and we can repair your credit after it's done. At that point I said, sign me up. Mm -hmm. So the long and short of it is they were a brand new debt settlement company in San Diego, right here in the Mission Valley area. And by the time I'd met with them, 10 minutes later, I'd gotten home and I had a call on my answering machine back in those days before cell phones and they were asking me to come back in and ask me if I would um, be interested in running their sales division and I said absolutely not I have a company that I'm running and you know I know I've got my own business mm -hmm. well they literally stalked me for about six weeks eight weeks and they kept calling a couple times a week are you sure are you sure just come down and talk to us Finally, I looked at myself and I said, what are you doing? You're struggling with your own business. Go down and see what they have to say. Mm -hmm. So I went down. I said, share with me your mission, vision, values. Are you willing to show me your business plan? Which they were. And I said, all right. I took the business plan home. They shared their mission, vision, values. And I'm like, okay, this sounds cool. Took the business plan home, looked through it, called them up and said, let's talk. So I had some um, of my own, so to speak, criteria that if I was going to come on board with them, there were certain things that I needed. Yeah. One of that was that I wanted to learn the business inside and out. From the sales I, I could do, I've done sales my whole life. Um, so the sales, the debt settlement, and the credit repair piece. Mm -hmm. They actually agreed to teach me all three of those pieces, even though they wanted me just to run the sales division. Yeah. So. I said, all right, let's talk money. I had a number in my head. They came back, they asked me what I wanted. I said, no, tell me, make me an offer. They made me an offer for five grand more than what I had in my head. I said, let's go. <laughs> so that is how I got into the business. I started with them. Um, we grew extremely quickly. I took their company in the first six months. Um, I'd hired 10 mm -hmm. salespeople. And by month six, we'd moved into the brand new Hyundai building in Mission Valley. But when I say that we started ground floor, when I went to go meet with them, I literally, we sat cross-legged on the floor. They didn't even have furniture in the, um, <laughs> the office yet. So anyways, long story short, um, I got out of my debt, $40,000. I got out of that for um, about 18000 and I was out of that within 18 months. So wow. completely debt free in wow. 18 months. And then we restored my credit back to good standing. So that said, I compl credit issues are very personal. Most people will not talk about them. Mm -hmm. um, I know the stress associated with it. I know the sleepless nights. I can honestly tell you that the day I handed off my debt to them and said, you guys take care of it, was the first time in four years that I actually slept well at night. Wow. I mean, I would wake up in the middle of the night and sweat. How am I going to, you know, how am I going to feed myself? How am I going to make my car payment? I mean, it was horrible. So I know the drama associated with that. And many people just bury their heads because they don't want to deal with it. Others want to deal with it, but they don't know where to start. Mm -hmm. So I'm here to help those that may have questions or need some relief. Now, I will tell you that debt settlement and credit repair are two entirely different programs. Mm -hmm. So it depends what somebody needs. Okay. Um, there's people that don't necessarily have most recent debt. They have very old debt that has all gone to collections. They would be more of a credit repair 
client to where we can just go in without them having to pay back their debts and wipe most, if not all, hopefully all of that derogatory information from their credit reports and restore their FICO scores back to good standing. Mm -hmm. And I like to say we give people a second chance. Yeah. So, so the credit, um, how does this differ from like debt consolidation? Great question. <clears throat> so debt consolidation is, there's companies out there which are really, they're debt consolidation companies and really what they are is their consumer credit counseling companies. Mm -hmm. So if you go through them, now not all creditors will work with them. So you might have 10 accounts that you would like for them to handle, but they may not only be able to accept four or five of them. Um, the other six, four, whatever, you'd still be on your own. So the accounts that they will take on board, they do not do settlements, even though they say they do settlements. They do not do settlements on the principal. They might negotiate a lower interest rate for you, but when all said and done, you're still paying back the full amount owed. To where debt settlement, you're only paying back about 40 to 50% of what you owe. Mm -hmm. um, with credit counseling, this is interesting because most people come to them because they can't continue to make ends meet. Mm -hmm. Yet when I've looked into credit counseling programs, the monthly payment that they want from you typically is the same as to what you're already paying out or sometimes even a bit more. So to me personally, those... Um, Companies do not make sense. Mm -hmm. It makes more sense to go through a credit repair or a debt settlement program to where you're not paying back full principal. Okay. Karen, um, as, a, as an ex-banker, aren't these yes. the credit, not the credit repair, the what you were talking about, not debt settlement, but the counseling and the ones that negotiate for you, aren't those funded mostly by banks because they want... <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. They are 100% funded by the bank. So, you know, and, and, and the whole big picture, the credit bureaus themselves are in bed with the banks also. So yeah. the banks are the ones, you know, feeding their bottom line. Um, yeah. So, and with debt settlement, not at all. I mean, we, I'll be honest, debt settlement, we're not the bank's best friend, you know, because they know they're not getting all of their money back. Mm -hmm. But when People have had to, accounts that have been delinquent for months or years, and the banks haven't gotten anything from them in two, three years. Now we come in and we say, hey, we know they owe you 10000 but we've got four for you. Take it or leave it. Now the banks like us a little bit because we're at least giving them something versus okay. nothing. Right. So what that happens after... Um, I, I would imagine that the bank, you know, just writes off the difference. Correct. But what happens to you afterwards? You know, do you, that, that account has to be closed? Do you never get credit with that provider again? What happens? All awesome questions, Patty. Um, the account is closed. Now, we can't negotiate a settlement until an account has been charged off and closed okay and that typically happens at the six month bar so understand we are a program for people that are in financial hardship um can't make ends meet we're not a program for somebody that says hey i've got 100k in debt and i'm tired of paying it yeah okay? so um so for those people that have already gone delinquent or are in the process of because they know they can't keep this up um the creditors have absolutely no incentive to settle with us as long as people are current on their accounts. So once they start going delinquent, um, we typically wait until that six month mark, right around charge off, when the banks are, they're gonna lose that debt in a sense, okay? It's gonna get written off their books as a loss. So then we can swoop in and say, hey, we know you're gonna lose it, you know, here's an offer, take it or leave it. Um, so what happens is that um, for the consumer, now, yes, their credit has been impacted because they have those 30, 60, 90 day late, charge off, maybe in some cases they've gone to collections. We don't care who's holding the debt. We're going to settle with an original creditor or a collector the same. Um, so once the... Um, the debt is delinquent enough for us to settle, 
we'll come in and offer a lump sum settlement on it. Okay. Okay. Do they typically bite on that? Do they go? Yes, for they it? always will because they haven't had anything. They haven't mm -hmm. gotten money from them for a minimum of six months or, um, you know, or longer. So they're usually not really willing to negotiate prior to six months because they're still holding that debt in house. Mm -hmm. um, and they haven't sent it even to their in-house collections quite yet um, or charged it off. So they're still hoping to get something. And if we went in, say, at three months delinquency, they might say, sure, we'll take a settlement, but we want 80% of what you owe. Mm -hmm. It's not, a, if you could pay 80, you could probably pay 100. So is, so, the, only cri is the only criteria for somebody that, to consider debt settlement is that they're six months or more past due, and then they, they have, is it proving financial hardship? You know, for people that might watch this, Karen, who's the likely candidate, you know what I mean, besides... Anybody that can't make ends meet, okay. um, they are okay. not required to prove hardship at all. Now, we do ask, you know, what got you to this point? Mm -hmm. And there are typically three things that put people in financial hardship. One is job loss, yeah. two is divorce, and three is unforeseen medical issues that have just put people over the edge. So those are, you know, kind of the three main reasons that people end up in financial hardship. So we ask them for that story, that backstory, because we do go to the creditor with that. And honestly, you know, we like to say, think that the more compelling the hardship, um, you know, the better chance that the creditor might have a little compassion. Yeah. But they will always settle. They'll always settle mm -hmm. on delinquent accounts. Wow. So how does this, how is this better than bankruptcy? Okay, um, so a bankruptcy, whether you file a chapter seven or a chapter 13, they're going to follow you around for seven to 10 years. The, uh, chapter seven will follow you around for 10 years. Okay? And what's the After, difference between seven and 13? Uh, chapter 13 is where you make too much money to qualify for a seven. A seven's gonna wipe out all your debt. Done deal. Okay. People think clean slate. Yes, you have a clean slate, but you have a 10 year tail on you to where every time you go to get a credit card, purchase a home, a car, that bankruptcy is gonna pop up and your interest rates are gonna suck. Mm -hmm. okay? So, but a chapter seven wipes everything out. A chapter 13 is where you make too much money to qualify for a seven. So a chapter 13 is nothing more than a repayment plan. And you are repaying back over time all of your debt. You're not saving money. Um, you're just on a extended payment plan and that's handled through the courts. Okay, so the courts are taking your money and dispersing it to your creditors each month, a little here and a little there. Um, and typically a chapter 13 is going to take somebody five years yes. with debt. <laughs> yes. Yes. And it's, it's kind of, um, it's a, a little bit misleading when they say a chapter seven all, like, follows you around for seven years. It follows you around for seven years after it's been paid off. So in the whole big picture, <clears throat> it can be 12 years, you know? Um, now the thing is, is that, um, with the debt settlement, it's a, not really a repayment plan. It's a settlement plan to where you're only paying back 40 to 50 percent. And typically, we have people, depending on their budget, out of debt in 36 months or less versus five years and paying back the full amount. Yeah. And there's no tail with a um, debt settlement program. There's nothing on your credit report that shows you've been through any type of credit counseling or any type of bankruptcy or anything like that. Now, you will show the delinquencies or charge-offs on your credit, which you would show through a bankruptcy as well. Mm -hmm. uh, but from a lending standpoint, all lenders really want to know is that you took care of your obligations. Yes, you may have run into trouble at some point. Who these days has not? They want to know that you didn't ignore it. They want to know that you took care of it. And when that account shows up with that zero balance, settled for less, they know you took care of it. Mm -hmm. Wow. 
So what kind of debt would not qualify for this? Okay. Um, any type. The debt settlement programs are for unsecured debt. Okay. So yeah. typically it's going to be credit cards or unsecured loans. Okay. So secured loans such as auto loans, not an option for debt settlement. Um, student loans, not an option for debt settlement. I have a different program for that. Um, oh, and you know what? I take that back. Um, private student loans, we've always been able to settle. What we are finding now, and this is very new over the last few months, is that um, federal government student loans that are in collections, we have been able to start getting settlements on those as well. And that is very new, very yeah. new. Now, we're not getting quite the 40 to 50 percent settlement on those. It's a little bit higher, around 60-ish, um, but still better than them paying back the full 100 percent. Okay. Um, home mortgages not again a secured loan so anything that they can repossess is not a candidate for the debt settlement program okay so you can't get that million dollar home for six hundred thousand unfortunately you cannot now if you have a second on it if you have a HELOC on that a home equity line of credit and that account because what we do see is where homes have gone into foreclosure and they've had seconds on them yeah. um and the so the bank's coming for them after them on that second. We can negotiate that for them because oh. the house is no longer attached to it. Yeah. It's been foreclosed on. Okay. Mm. Wow. Yeah. Can we all just ask questions? Can I, I got like 20,000? Yeah. Oh, please do. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I was holding back. I was like, you this know. This is a forum. <laughs> oh, you got it. Okay, good. Sorry. I thought you were like leaving all the questions. So I apologize for that. Um. Karen, this is, you know, as a banker, you know, it's always this mindset with people that it's like, oh, I need to honor my debt. It's like, I need to pay this off. And yet when I was in banking, and I've told you this story is how many of the, I mean, it was mostly attorneys and commercial loan brokers, right? That would come in and they'd go get a whole new credit report. I mean, talk about a little bit about just the mindset for people thinking like I'm a bad person because I'm going to go, I'm, I'm, I'm going to, you know, just go bankrupt or get a debt settlement or it's a shameful thing. Cause to me, it's like credit's so easy to get anymore. And there's so much that, you know, um, jobs are reliant on credit scores. Right. Loans are, I mean, it's like, is it, is, are you a bad person because you go through debt settlement or, you know, file bankruptcy or do credit reports or credit repair? Because to me, I think that piece needs to, people need to get over that. There's so much that's, you know, we're judged by it, yet it's like the guilt and the shame that comes with it, I think is correct. Me off, let me say that. <laughs> right. And you know what, and you're absolutely right. And it's a great point. And sadly, here in the US, our worth seems to be determined by our credit score, which is horribly sad, I think. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're really looked down upon, you're treated like a second class citizen if you have a low credit score and you can't obtain credit. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the long and short of it, the way I had to look at it was, you know, all these years uh, that I'd had great credit and had always paid back my debts. When I had to look at it after those four years of making minimum payments and getting nowhere, I thought, man, $14,000, I paid them just an in interest alone. Well, think of all those years. I've had credit since I was, 18 years old. I'm 62. Mm -hmm. That's a long time. Mm -hmm. I've paid a lot of interest over the years. No, you're 29. You're 29. Yeah, I mean, I am 29. Um, still a lot of interest over <laughs> those years. Uh, so, you know, the thing is, is that uh, oftentimes the banks are not taking the loss that people think they're taking. Remember, they make a ton of money off us, off of interest rates, off of late fees, um, you know, bank fees, all kinds of things. So, but you know, to to speak to your question, Michelle, after 2008, I don't know anybody that hadn't been through some type of financial devastation mm -hmm. with that. You know, whether it was job loss, losing a home, losing their 401ks, they've lost everything. Yeah. So are you a bad person? No, you're a victim of circumstance. Mm -hmm. And I can say in doing this for 20 years, um, there was a time when it seemed like you know, and credit repairs always kind of have this bad stigma. 
Um, but there seemed like there was a time when most of the people we were dealing with were people that were just irresponsible, okay, mm -hmm. and didn't want to pay their debts. Nowadays, from 2008 moving forward, I have a lot of clients that are attorneys, that are pro athletes, that are bankers, that are CEOs, the, that are doctors. You know, these are people that um, that were victims of some type of circumstance, you know, whether again, could it have been a divorce that just annihilated them financially? Could it have been um, a loss of a spouse, you know, to where they lost in the biggest income or unforeseen medical issues that, I mean, medical issues, uh, medical bills today, just they bury people. They really do. So no, you're not a bad person. Bad stuff happened to you. And we're here to help you get through that as easily as possible by doing the right thing and taking care of the obligation as best you can yeah. and really giving you a second chance to get back out there. We rebuild your credit and give you that opportunity to start over. And we coach you through how to do that responsibly the next time so that you don't come back and see me again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, I know you've been doing this for such a long time. I mean, there's, you know, my banking background, again, that's where I'm coming from, right? That no, I'm not a know-it-all. I've been, uh, you know, nobody knows what's going to happen to them, you know, in life and business. So, you know, it's like, I don't think anybody's averse of, of credit issues. That said, you know, there's so many people out there and I know you've been doing it a long time and you're legit. It's like, you're honest, you have good integrity, you're ethical. There are some crappy ass companies out there. I mean, how does somebody define whether you've got, you know, smoke and air, you know, crappy credit repair company that's just going to take your money versus what I think, and I know that you do, which is legitimately, you know, professionally, all of that. Like, how do you, how do you sniff out the difference? And I'm curious because this is what you do and more people need to know about you. I'm just saying. <laughs> Thank you. Um, you know, the thing is, is when, if you're talking to a credit repair company and they're guaranteeing you that we guarantee we'll remove everything from your credit report, we'll guarantee your scores will be at a certain point, we'll guarantee that we'll be done by a certain time frame. I'd run like hell. I mean, honestly, we can't guarantee. It. Actually, for compliance reasons, we're not even allowed to 100% guarantee deletion of anything. Mm -hmm. So we can have the exact same scenario with two different people and end up with two entirely different results. It's crazy. So wow. the thing that's frustrating about this industry is that the laws are black and white, but nobody is out there overseeing the creditors, the collectors, the credit bureaus to make sure that they're playing by the rules. At best, they may get their hand slapped a time or two. Their pockets are so deep, they don't care. Um, they ignore the law all day long we fight. We're advocates. We're going to go out there and fight from every legal standpoint that we can think of. And we're going to keep bantering them until we finally at some point either just run into a brick wall and say, hey, we've tr done this for six months. We've tried everything. This one or two items are just not coming off. Sorry, but your other 15 did. <laughs> okay. Um, so, you know, we, we just, we don't know how the, everything's going to turn out. What I can tell you is my best 20 years of experience is that by looking at a file, I can do a very um, good guesstimate as to the number of accounts that are most likely going to be deleted. I can say, you know, um, uh, Susie, you've got 15 accounts here and I can pretty honestly say that or, you know, pretty what am I, the word I'm looking for, um, I can say that 80%, if not more, are going to be deleted. And these might be the two or three that I think will give us trouble. So I can say that. Um, we run, with our collection accounts, we run 80 to 100% deletion rate on collection accounts. Wow. So, you know, um, tax liens, judgments, 100% on those pretty much. Um, Seriously? Okay, that's a big it's one. It's a different, it's a little different process than the traditional yeah. credit repair, yeah. but um, tax liens and judgments, we can get those removed from credit. Now, let me be really clear, that doesn't relieve you of that financial obligation. You still owe those. We're getting it removed from paper. Your credit scores go up, a lender looks at it, um, don't know they existed. So, 
Wowza. You know, talk a little bit, because I know, I mean, what's the credit repair process like? Because I know that was kind of part of today and people don't know what it's like. What's the responsibility for them? What do you do? Talk a little bit about that, if you don't mind. Okay. So um, I'll talk about our process, um, which the client's responsibility is we do everything for them. So we make this as seamless as possible. Um, we put all of our letters, dispute letters, are put together um, specifically to each person's individual situation for each account. Now, um, which is a lot more work intensive than most companies, okay? Mm -hmm. Most companies are going to use template letters that they can pull off the internet and they're just going to use that one basic template letter and send it out to all the bureaus, okay? If at best, it works marginally. They might get lucky. Um, the credit bureaus are so used to seeing those form letters that they just, they ignore them for the most part. Wow. So um, <coughs> the, with us, we're putting all the letters together specifically, and we're not dealing just with the three bureaus. We're going to also address creditors and collectors. So we're going to hit them from three different angles, which is going to yield better results. And our letters are very heavily laden with law, okay? Whether it's contract law, consumer law, um, state, federal, doesn't matter. Like we're going in, um, throwing the law in their face. And Sometimes they ignore it and sometimes they don't. But we put the letters together. We're going to address the envelopes. We're going to mail them out certified for you. You don't have to do anything um, with regards to submitting them. Wow. Your responsibility is going to be two things. One, please, while we're walking through this process, please do not go out and apply for any new credit and don't have your credit pulled. It will or can hinder our process. The second thing is um, you'll be receiving in the mail, once we send the disputes out, in about 30 to 45 days, you'll receive updated credit reports showing deletions or what still remains, which we'll go back and address. You'll receive those in the mail. We ask that you scan those to us um, ASAP so that we can follow up. Because whatever didn't come off that first round, we're going to go back and hit from a different angle the second round. So we're going to fight for you. Um, I will say from the, on the credit repair side of things, um, in most cases, 90% of the cases, we have you in and out of this program, scores elevated within 90 days or less. Well, so I have a question. This almost is like, to me, this is where my crazy mind goes. It's like, it's almost for people, you know, and again, I'm not saying it's a strategy, but you know, when you have hardship, I mean, everybody knows from 2008, is this something that people come back to you over and over again for? You know, or is it just a one-time kind of thing? I mean, I'm curious because it sounds like we get your credit scores up, but then, you know, my question is, which is bad. I'm sorry. I know this is being recorded. Why do people pay their bills? <laughs> <laughs> right. I hear you. I don't know. I'm um, like, why? You know, um, in hindsight, I didn't start a business that has recurring revenue because, you know, the idea, <laughs> darn it, excuse me. The idea is to get them out of this debt, coach them through, like I said, we coach them through how to use their new credit responsibly so that they don't have to come back to us again. Inevitably, I do have people that come back three and four and five times over these years, but I will say 90% of the time, they're not coming back with a whole nother credit file of 10, 15, 20 accounts that went delinquent. What happens is um, they might have had some issue happen, you know, recently that threw them, that caused them to um, um, have some accounts that charged off or that, um, I'm trying to think of some good examples, um, or that maybe there was a collection out of the blue that showed up that they weren't even aware of, because that will happen. Collection accounts get sold over and over and over down the road. So, you know, sometimes collections show up, people don't even realize they have that bill. I mean, they really don't. Like, they'll move. A good example is um, somebody will move from one resident to the next, thinking, you know, I took care of all my um, gas and electric. Well, there was this little window of between the time they moved and the time the service got started. They're not even aware of it. Um, 
SDG &E doesn't make a big deal about trying to reach out and get paid. They just send it to collections. Um, or a lot of times medical too, because people think their insurance took care of it and they didn't and they send it to collections. So sometimes things like that, it's usually when they come back, it's usually these onesies or twosies that have popped up and then we'll address it from there. How much of it of, of the credit repair do you find just from medical issues usually? I mean, that's usually what gets people, isn't it? Or, or do you find it's a um, No, I mean, it's all over the board. It's usually um, loss of income, I would say, would be the biggest um, reason that people can't make ends meet. But to look at a person's credit report, I would say that there's a good, um, probably 60, 65% of people have some type of medical issue on their reports, whether that's what threw them into the hardship, not necessarily, but um, we see a lot of medical issues. Mm -hmm. A lot. Yeah, I would imagine. I would imagine. Yeah. yeah can, can you said something about um, tax relief. Like how, how does that work? Because I see a lot of places that advertise, they'll help you with your tax lien or your tax burden. Right. So um, the tax, from removing it from the credit report is what we do here in-house, okay? That's us getting it removed from the credit. That does not get it removed from public records, does not mean you don't owe the debt. So for people that have um, extreme tax liabilities, I actually have an attorney that I work very close with, um, and I'll refer it out. It's a tax attorney, so we'll refer it out to them, and depending on the person's situation, they may be able to do what's called an offer and compromise, which is yeah. basically a settlement on their taxes. Now that's only good for, um, for federal tax, for the IRS, okay? Mm -hmm. IRS will settle, state tax, not even gonna play. They're not even willing to entertain any type of settlement. Wow. Really? I didn't nope. know that. Hmm. I did nope, not, know. not at all. I mean, you can get on a payment plan with them, you know, an affordable payment plan. Um, so yeah, and on the IRS tax debt too, the offer and compromises are hard to come by. So you do have to really have a legitimate reason for not being able to pay back the debt that you owe over the rest of your lifetime kind of thing. So they're not easy to come by, but they are possible. So Anna has her hand up. Anna, do you, can you unmute or do you wanna? Yeah, there you yeah. Go. hi, how are you? Hi Anna. <laughs> yeah, I just wanna, um, I mean, just a couple of things. Wait, let me just uh, start. And I, and I wanted to meet you guys because I haven't been in the meetings in a long time. And I was not 100% sure what was the subject, but then I came in and I saw it and I was like, oh, this sounds awesome. So thank you so much for all your knowledge. I, I'm so happy you share everything. I was one of those after 2008 that I had a business with a few partners, the business dissolved. And I did go through some uh, hardship and debt consolidation and everything, sure. everything that you're talking about, I'm actually familiar with it at that time. And it's uh, not pleasant, as you guys yeah. have been talking about, but I know it's not very uncommon either, um, unfortunately, right. days. So um, much better place now, not that I don't have any debt, just like Yay. most of my yeah. But I guess my question, and thank you so much for explaining what you did, because I was not 100% sure. Now I understand it very well, which is awesome. Um, and I guess my question is more in lines of, not at the point where you are not paying debt, you know, but debt is, you know, at a point where you wanted to start lowering it because like you said, I know we are just paying interest. Um, I know there's a way that you can um, sort of merge accounts. Is there something that you recommend? Is there something that you can um, give us any advice on? Meaning like accounts that are from uh, same company, credit cards or not, that you can just do it with a lower interest. Do you have any, any ideas on that or any, any thoughts that you could, that you could, um, Tell us about. Are you talking about like transferring balances? To exactly. That's exactly the terminology I'm looking for. Yes. Okay. That, yeah. Right. So if you're able, if your credit is to a point where you're able to get a zero balance interest rate for a certain mm -hmm. amount of time, then I would say absolutely transfer yeah. whatever you can <laughs> to that zero balance. However, whatever that amount is that you transfer, uh, let's say that your zero balance is good for 18 months, okay? Because um, they're usually good for six months, 12 months, and sometimes 18 months. Mm -hmm. right. So wh whatever the balance is, say you transfer $10,000, I would divide that by 18 months 
and make that your monthly payment to them, okay? Even mm -hmm. if the minimum's less, make that monthly payment to them so that when 18 months is up, that $10,000 worth of debt is paid off. Because right, right. after the zero balance um, offer is over, after that 18 months, that interest rate is probably going to shoot up to 24%. Mm -hmm. So anything right. that's left on that card would um, would now be at the rate of 24%. Okay? And you see this, people doing this all the time, like you don't really necessarily need to work with anybody. You just pretty much call oh, no, the no, no. You can your... do that on your own. I've yeah. done that. I mean, balance 0% interest rates are great deals. Yeah. Um, like I said, but what people do is they charge a large amount and then they just make the minimum payment. And then the offer is over. So now they've still got most of that debt left. Now it's back up to 24%. Right. So or they charge the, the very one they transferred. They charge that too. I was just going to get there, Patty, because this is really important. Yeah. What people don't know is that when you transfer, let's say you transfer $10,000 to a zero balance card, but you're also using that card to charge on. Um, sometimes, oftentimes, you don't get the zero balance when you're charging. You might still get a lower interest rate, but I'll tell you the minimum payment or that monthly payment that you're paying that card, typically it's going to go, it's not even going to go to your zero balance. It's going to go to um, the, the interest rate card. So mm. wow. yeah, it's, I, I would keep those totally separate. Like if you're going to do a balance transfer, don't charge on that card. Right. Just use it for this specific okay. purpose of paying down the, um, the debt that you transferred. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. And you can do that on your own. Yes. You okay. That okay. That's a tip I didn't even know of. Wow. That's a new yeah. one. It's interesting. And Patty, I want to come back to something. I just realized I forgot to answer one of the questions that you asked, which was, if somebody goes through debt settlement and they take, you know, their cards through there, can they get a card again with that company? Mm -hmm. um, I'm going to speak from my experience. Um, the answer is absolutely yes. <laughs> and I think I had taken three or four cards through the program. And just for kicks, remember, debt settlement was back very new when I did it. Just for kicks, after everything was settled out, I went and applied with those four companies again just to see if I could get credit. I got cards with every single one of them. Wow. So they were just looking at, hey, my credit scores back up and she doesn't owe us any debt. So, yeah, yeah. so it's not. Um, the one account that I would, the one company that I would say m might be iffy on that and probably is, is American Express. But anybody else, you shouldn't have a problem, you know, it's reestablishing credit again. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do, do you find mostly, Karen, that people go, debt settlement first i know you talked about it at the beginning but to me if you do credit repair and that doesn't work then maybe debt settlement is the second step no um, what you know that? i um i can look at a report and know whether it's a debt settlement candidate or a credit okay. repair candidate so if somebody comes to me like i had somebody this morning that had i think they had like eight accounts they were 30 60 90 days late um, they weren't even at that six month mark yet, but they knew they were not able to continue keeping up on their payment. They had, um, they had a, um, decrease in income. Okay. They got all their overtime cut and they got their hours cut. So mm -hmm. they can't keep doing this. Um, so for them, they are, their creditors, original creditors are all still holding the accounts. They are clearly a debt settlement candidate, okay? Um, not credit repair. Credit repair is going to be more of the older debt, stuff that's um, um, gone to collections, okay? Mm -hmm. Repos, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so, and sometimes the files are combinations of both. And in that case, I say, let us go through credit repair first because it's the lesser uh, I mean, it's the um, um, least expensive option. Let us do that first. If there's anything still left after we're done and you want to negotiate it, then we can talk about that. Okay. What do you, I mean, Anna, Anna I want to say how nice, I mean, that was um, awesome what you shared because, I mean, me too, my situation has been much different. It's like my husband and his health issues over the years. Um, that just really has beat us up on credit. You know what I mean? So right. Oh, really sure. Tough to, get over the medical stuff. And then I, like everybody, I don't know anybody that wasn't impacted in 2008. I mean, gosh, you right. know, people lost homes. It's like, you know, jobs, Everything. all of that. 
but I think, you know, Karen, for you, it's like, what's something you wish more people knew about in relation to credit repair or debt settlement? Because to me, it's just this, like, banks don't talk about it. Of course they don't. You know what I mean? We were, we were just told that when we worked out a loan workout with somebody, that's what we did, you know, but then right. their credit was all crappy because it showed up as a loan workout, you know, on their right. credit. So what, right. what kind of things would you want people to know more of, of the top three that maybe they aren't aware of as consumers or even small businesses? You know, what I'd like them to know is first and foremost, understand that they're not alone. If they're going through this process, they are not alone. And there is, it, it's embarrassing. I went through it. It's, if I could just get people to, to kind of get over that, and I know that might sound harsh, I had to get over it. Get over it. Crap happened. It wasn't your fault. Um, know that there's people here that can help you. Know that there are legit credit repair companies out there, and they can take this burden off of you. They can help give you a clean slate and a new start. Um, you know, it, you can ask yourself, do you want to keep doing what you're doing and getting nowhere or getting deeper in the situation that you are? Mm -hmm. You're never going to get a handle on things. Your debt's not going to go away on its own, not for a long time anyways. Yeah. Um, and, you know, so know that there is help out there. Um, know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. And, you know, go, go for a fresh start. I mean, if it wasn't for me, going for a fresh start. I don't know where I'd be today. I mean, honestly, you mm -hmm. know, it, you just kind of feel like you're running and hiding all the time. Right. And, well, um, and I, I know so many small business owners that they just, they can't get a, uh, they can't get out of the, the issue for that. You know what I mean? It's like they just sit in their own stink for lack of a better phrase, because they're not willing to, you know, they've, they've been turned down. They feel like no banker will touch them, which is probably the case, but yeah, this could be an A step to a B solution, right? I mean, go through credit repair first, you know, and then see if you can get some financing that maybe you wanted for your business in a different way. Yeah. Right, absolutely, you know, and, and the good news, I tell people, look, the good news about credit is it is repairable, okay? That is the mm -hmm. good news, and many people don't know that, um, you know, and they are kind of stuck, but from what you're speaking about, Michelle, from a business standpoint, yeah, absolutely. You know, as a business owner, especially brand new startups, their business themselves has no credit history for the business. So you have to use your personal credit to be able to fund your business to get up and running. Mm -hmm. you know, um, on, you know, just slightly a different note, we also at Insight Credit Group also offer business funding and business credit to where we can help um, small businesses get funding to grow their business or help them establish credit in the business name, whether it's credit card loans or whatever. Um, that is a whole different segment. I don't want to go into that, but, you know, and once they're able to establish that business credit, um, it's really important to try to keep your business and your personal credit separate. Yeah. It really is. Yeah. Yeah. You know, because if your business crashes and burns, at least your personal credit's intact or vice versa. Yeah. Anna, did you have another question? I saw that your hand was up, but I wasn't sure if it was up from before. Oh, no, I have to bring it down. But um, <laughs> <laughs> bring don't worry. Down, Anna. no, but one comment I was thinking is that I, I you know, I, I think, and again, you know, because I went through the experience and you guys talked about before about how, you know, having bad credit makes you think, because it is true that your worth is based on that, right? Like yeah. you can really do anything. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I mean, I consider financial health as something so important, you know, I mean, I'm in health and wellness and to me, financial health is like, if you don't have that part, right. it's going to be very hard to do all the other things to take care of yourself, because like you said, Definitely. you don't sleep well. So, um, I think it's so important that there are these resources and that, you know, we can definitely, you know, come for you for guidance and, and Absolutely. you know, yeah, it's, it's, it's great. I really enjoy the conversation and um, yeah, I mean, you know, I think it's hard sometimes to take that step, you know, and I think it's so interesting with, with uh, 
credit cards, right? I always think about it because it's um, once your credit is repaired, you start getting the offers, you start getting the option of using yeah. it, right? And it's almost like, okay, I'll learn my lesson. Let me just, you know. Yeah. Yeah. And then I know that business is going well and excellent, but let's be smart about it because the business was going well at that point too. So who knows what's going to happen in the next few years, right? So um, I think the, the education, you know, that, that you can give to people in that regard, I think is also very important as business owners, you know, to know how to how to manage it and, you know, Absolutely. how good debt, what is bad debt and all those things that I think are, are so important to, to keep right. in mind. Right, you know, yeah. yeah. And there are little, you know, tips and tricks to making sure that you keep your credit intact. And, yes. you know, um, it, uh, yeah, it, it is important. I mean, you know, you can't even go, Get cable TV or a cell phone. I mean, you need your credit for everything these days. And it is, I think it's sad. I honestly do. I mean, most other companies don't have the credit system like we do, you know, but um, yeah, it certainly defines us. Karen, how often should somebody be checking their credit? You know, you mentioned things popping up that you didn't even know about. Right. So. right. Um, I personally say that uh, there are what are called credit monitoring services out there these days. Mm -hmm. And I strongly suggest that people get a credit monitoring service um, because they notify you when any changes happen to your credit report. So if a new account pops up, a late payment, someone tries to open credit in your name, you will get an alert from it. Yeah. Um, there are several companies out there that they'll give you one report or two, like Credit Karma will give you two of the three reports. They don't give all three. Um, any company that's going to provide all three bureaus, and you really do need to look at all three bureaus, okay? But any company that provides all three, there is a slight monthly cost. They're a subscription-based um, product, mm -hmm. and they usually run anywhere from about $19.95 a month to $49.95 a month. Mm -hmm. um, if anybody's interested, I do, I can send them a link to the company that we recommend, which I've negotiated um, pr uh, lesser pricing with. So for $16.95 um, a month, they can monitor their credit. You know, it's pretty much monitored 24 seven. So wow, that's good. But that is one way to definitely know. I get people that come to me um, because they're going to go buy a home, right? And when their lender pulled their credit, they had all this crap on there that they didn't even know they had mm -hmm. because they never monitored their credit. And it would be old stuff from way back when they right. didn't even know about it. Don't even know who the collector is, you know, right. they, right, right. So monitoring it is important. Absolutely. I want to make sure I get one message across. I just can't believe you don't work with more small businesses because that is one thing I hear over and over and over from solopreneurs is like, I wouldn't qualify for credit or, you know, my credit's been damaged or this. And I'm like, they have, I just, God, let's get that message out that it's not just people looking to buy a home. It's like solo no. practitioners and solo preneurs. It's like, this could be a real game changer if they just manage that piece you know, yeah. of their business a little differently. That's, that's Absolutely. Awesome. You know, and I'm happy to have that conversation with them and take a look at their credit. And sometimes they don't actually need me. I can guide them to what they can do on their own to help improve their credit, you know? Wow. Um, and you're right. It isn't just people looking to buy a home. It's, I have, you know, people coming to me um, for employment because they need good credit for mm -hmm. employment. Um, being here in San Diego in a, a military town, I have, you know, our military coming to us for security clearances. They need good credit. For that military promotion, they need good credit. So, wow. you know, there's a, a, they want to buy a car at a decent rate instead mm -hmm. of the 27% interest they were paying on their last car. So, yeah. you know, but with small businesses, it is so important. And, you know, give me a shout out. I mean, let's the, the phone call cost you nothing, you know, let's chat about it. I'm, I'm happy to help in any way I can and provide as much guidance as, you know, needed. Well, well Karen, how, oh. I was going to say, how, how can people reach you? What's the best way to reach you? They can reach me directly um, on my cell, which is 619-318-9866. They can also go to the website, which is www.insightcreditgroup.com, 
and um, they can fill out an app, you know, a form on there, which um, a submission form, and I can contact them from there, or they can call the 800 number, which is 800-679-7172. Great. Bam. And your website is awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, one final thing for me, just because I know so many people get up in their head again, but the confidentiality that you handle with people, because this is such a personal thing, just, you know, sure. mention it, because I know that's a big deal to you. And I think for, you know, the fact when you know somebody calling somebody up and going, I got crappy credit, how can I fix it? That's a very confidential thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, it's, and, and it is sometimes what makes it hard for people to come to me, you know, and I know I've shared this with you, Michelle, before is that, you know, uh, we have a very large group of women that, you know, we are all part of. And uh, when I, you know, share what I do, I can sometimes see people just kind of shutting down, like they don't want to talk about it. And I just leave it be. But I have had people afterwards, you know, from the group reach out to me. Um, for help and I've helped them so um, you know the confidentiality it doesn't go beyond here and I will you know I will say that once you come on board with us uh, depending on credit repair debt settlement you are not really dealing with you're either dealing with me or my you're always dealing with me you can't get rid of me mm -hmm. um, you my, if it's a debt settlement, you'll be dealing with one of our negotiators. They will handle your file from conception to completion, so you will not be tossed around to a bunch of different hands. Um, same goes for credit repair. You'll be assigned a processor, and um, they'll handle it from you know beginning to end. So um, it is all very strictly confidential. I mean, and you know, I mean, even in, in banking and whatever, it's you know, I mean, look, even in our inner circle groups. Yeah. confidentiality right locked down do you know one last, it outside of the group and you know for anybody listening or watching it's like do you also deal both with business you know debt settlement and personal debt settlement so both are an option. absolutely uh -huh. okay. consumer debt and business debt absolutely so you know and we can deal with it both on the credit repair side or debt settlement side consumer and business yeah. You're a resource that needs to be more visible among our association, I think. What do you I, think, Donna? Yes, Patty? Yes. Let's come I, back for alternative funding and we'll do that conversation. I think that's right, a good yes. one. Yeah. yeah. Absolutely. And you know, Karen, I think that um, as, as rough as 2008 was, I think one good thing that came out of that was an awareness that there are predatory lenders and it's not always the consumer's fault, you know, that there are things that go on that are not reputable and having an avenue, having a way to get, um, to be restored, to be made whole again, you know, is really a, a wonderful service. And I, I'm so grateful that you spent your time with us here today and shared, I mean, amazing information. So yeah, anyone listening to this on the replay, you need to know this lady. Thank you so much, Patty. Thank you, Michelle. I appreciate you inviting me on it. It was great to see you. It has been Thank a while. You. Yeah, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Great to see you all as well. Yeah, thank you for putting this uh, calls together. And Let's to do more of these. Definitely, I want them. Definitely. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Yes. All right. Just stay, stay in tuned and be watching our Facebook page and LinkedIn for other upcoming events that we've got going on because we're always, uh, this is just a great benefit um, of knowing the brilliant women in Connected Women of Influence. We have a lot of subject matter experts, a lot of great information to share. So thanks for joining us today and join us again in the future. Thanks ladies. Take care. Take care. Bye. See you soon. Bye. Bye.